Hi, uh, welcome back to Tyler Matoon and Lee, and today it's duck enclosure day. It's a biggie. It's quite hot now. Lee made me work hard. <laughs> I'm fucking hot. Thirsty. Over halfway now, guys. With the uh, the fence, so all the posts are in. About 60% of the fence. And uh, it's reminded me of that well known Bruce Willis film. Armageddon, you know, where he stays behind to blow the uh, the bomb up on the uh, the planet and the sun's coming up and the uh, the planet's getting blown to pieces by the sun. That's what it's like here, we're racing against the sun. It's getting so hot. But uh, we've come too far to stop now. So uh, we'll keep pushing on and hopefully let the ducks in here today. Line my missus. Even your hat's sweaty. You're in the desert. <laughs> Here we are then. It's all done and dusted. The impenetrable fence is installed. And the proof is in the, the pudding. Over there we've got Vince and Junior, and one of the adult females, and our new goslin, JJ. They're out and all the khaki Campbells are out as well. They've been in here about half an hour and you can see where they've been already. So just run through the, uh, this ingenious fence system. So uh, bamboo poles, free of course. Um, recycled old fencing wire from the duck and chicken enclosure near the house. Uh, and so the only thing we've had to buy is some metal which turns twisted around each each post. Now called our latest creation, Le Fence de Tricolaire. Yeah, I know, it's hard to believe I uh, failed French, isn't it? Um, it's a French fence and it comes in three colours. So we've got the uh, rusty bullet hole metal there, the uh, blue netting from another job there, and then down here, past the well, which is full to the brim. There's a couple of big bullfrogs in there. Down here, past the Jenny. So we've got the third colour, the black mesh there. So, a lot, a lot, there's about, there's about 100 metres of of fencing all told so that would have cost way too much to uh, use new chicken wire the same as we'd use around the the uh, poultry enclosures near the house <coughs> so we've uh, recycled and I'm quite happy with it and I'll just show you the tunes brilliant invention because this is a little bit high for getting over so we've incorporated a slit system and then you just get over there. Ingenious. Uh, of course, it's available on our ebook. So it's titled, don't forget, La Fence de Tricoleur. Let's just have a quick look in there. You can see the ducks have already started making headway down here. It's, uh, this reminds me of Jurassic Park. It's number two or three, where uh, all the velociraptors are going through the long grass. You can just see all the grass moving everywhere. But that's brilliant. They're not even bothered about the pellet. We, we give them pellet for lunchtime. So, a couple of reasons we've done this. One is to cut down on feed costs. Two, we're running short on green gold. Um, even the catfish have started to eat it now. So numbers are dwindling, unfortunately. 
um, and it's saving us a shed load of time. If you imagine we were shredding twice a day for three feeds, uh, no shredding involved for this. How long this grass and weeds and bugs are going to last them, I, I don't know. I don't think it's going to be long, but we should get a good week or two out of that. And uh, of course, it's going to be more nutritious than um, bananas and or banana trees and green gold all shredded up. There's uh, so many bugs in here. So less bugs on the farm, that's got to be good as well. Excellent. A success. Quite a hard job in the heat. Uh, we had sweaty flip flops, I went over a couple of times. Toon impaled herself on some wire a couple of times. And uh, I got swore at a couple of times for not doing it how, how it should be done. But uh, apart from that, good, a good project ticked off the list. Only another 836 projects to go. Don't bet against us though, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna get there. Some people have asked the questions, um, heights that your, your fence needs to be when you're keeping ducks. You know, depending on what, what duck breed you have. Well, if you've got a mallard, it doesn't matter. You, know, you can have a 100 foot fence, but they'll, they can fly off to China if they so wish. Um, your khaki Campbells, they're not too bad. They, they can get a good, I would say about five foot off the, off the ground, but they just don't bother. Uh, Muscovies, although they're a heavier, slower bird, they're roosting ducks. I'm not, I'm not joking. It, that's, they are actually roosting ducks. Um, they like to roost in trees if they're in the wild. So they can get over your fences. But again, if you've had them from an early age, then uh, they're too lazy to do that as well. Uh, your geese, they could fly off into the sunset, never see them again. But again, lazy buggers. But what I would say with the geese is the last time we set this up, it was all blue net. And if you don't get it taut enough, uh, what Vince used to do, because he is a bugger, he would put his head over here and squash it down and let the girls climb over. So uh, he's a bit of a naughty chap, he is. But uh, if you just look over there, look at the size of Junior now. The first one's Junior. Don't know if it's a, a boy or a girl. Hopefully it's another girl. So we've got JJ as well now, and there's still eight more eggs um, in the clutch that the other female, adult female, sitting on. <clears throat> so hopes are high for those. We did have um, three others hatch. One was suffocated, which is quite, quite common. Um, a chap called Pete told me that. He's uh, had the same trouble. Hang on, they want to go back in. Let's go and let the, the geese back in. Um, so he takes them out. Um, so we took two out, but one was already at death's door anyway. Uh, and the other one just flipping dropped dead anyway. So, and it wasn't cold. Uh, we didn't let them get wet or anything. Settle down. Jesus. I'm gonna let you back in, but you can jog on now. Oh. Very, very protective geese. Beautiful though, aren't they? Really, really nice. Oh, we've, um, I've decided on the new title for the, uh, the ducks. Previously, the uh, Duck Death Squad. Now it's the, uh, the KCU, which sounds like a, a firm, a football job firm, but uh, it's uh, Kaki Campbell Ultras, so thank you Stinky Polecat for that. And uh, there's lots of other good, good suggestions as well. There were several other good suggestions, but I had to decide on one and KCU, it's just, it's just got a nice ring to it. It gives me flashbacks for one of my favorite movies, Green Street, which has uh, got Frodo in there. He's, he's the main character and uh, turns out to be a football yob. So uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's quite a good film that. Right then, look at all my beauties.
if you're thinking about keeping ducks um, we've got quite a lot of information um, about the various duck breeds that you can keep out here um, but personally we, we go for the uh, the khaki Campbells yes we have got some Muscovies we'd like some Pekins but every time you ask for uh, anyone got any Pekins and they say yes when you turn the Muscovies so <coughs> I don't know what Pekin is in uh, in Thai so if you'd like a bit more information about duck breeds in Thailand I'll uh, pop an end screen thumbnail on there for you to choose and uh, that goes through the various breeds on you know eggs meat all those sorts of things and what would be best for you right then thanks for watching oh and I've got one more important inf bit of information for you guys Manoi Manoi So the big news guys, I'm sure most of you are aware that uh, Toon and I are in a, a modern day relationship. Uh, our particular relationship is uh, known as a F FM relationship, female, female, male relationship. Now, uh, a couple of videos ago, you did see that Coco Chanel is no longer with us, uh, but she has been replaced. Um, and my new bird is incredibly dirty. She speaks really, really naughty words. Uh, and she's also French as well. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce to you, uh, Michelle Bonbon. Thank you.